Hello everyone, welcome back to another math video. This one will be geometry. Kind of important to calculus later down the road. So I think if you're in geometry in ninth grade, then you'll probably be in calculus by college. Pre-calculus in 12th grade, I think. But anyway, let's do the problem. So rotate the triangle about the x-axis right there. What is the volume of the shape formed? So here's the triangle, it's in red. It's the 30, 90, and then that angle is 60 because the sum of the interior angles for a triangle is 180. Then minus the known angles, which are 90 and 30, that's a 60. So let me get to what it means when it says rotate the triangle about the x-axis. So x-axis is this horizontal one right there. And when it says rotate, basically it means fold this triangle down all the way, like as if it's folding towards you and then going back like a, um, like a cone. So let me draw that in three dimensions. Let me use red. So I think I do this. Yes. Okay, so this is pretty accurate. I get to use paint. So if you imagine this, th this uh, 3D shape, it kind of looks like this. So what we have is, um, this is the base of the cone, and then these are the two sides on the top. So if you turn your head sideways, you can see that it kind of looks like a um, ice cream cone, or like a traffic cone, but like really short. Okay. So that's what it means. And then the volume of the cone, let's get to that first. The, vol the, the volume formula for the cone is 1 over 3 pi r squared. r is um, this length right there. That's the base, by the way, pi r squared. And then the height, which is right there. So you can actually get these um, r and h variables from the side ratios for the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So those should be memorized, but if you don't know, let me draw you a tiny one right there. Okay, Tiny right triangle right there. So let's say this side is um, one. Then the hypotenuse will be two, and then this other leg will be root three. So that's the ratio. And here we have our hypotenuse. So we can get the shorter side easily. Shorter side will have a um, length of 1. And then the other side, the other leg, will be root 3. And now we look at r. r will be right here, this second leg, which has a length of root 3. So we can try plugging this in. v equals 1 over 3 pi. Those are constants, don't need to change them. And then root 3 squared, then h. What is h? Well, h would be right here. As you can see, this would be the center of the base for this cone, and then go all the way up to the tip. And that's this uh, first leg I was talking about with a length of 1. So multiply by 1. Now, let's simplify this 1 over 3 times pi. And root 3 squared, root, uh, square root and squaring are inverse functions. Basically, they cancel each other out. So we get just 3. Because this is kind of like, uh, for square root, it's like having a the interior number to the power of 1 over 2. And then you can do the rule with like um, x, a, b x to the power of a to the power of b is equal to x a b multiplied. So we get that rule. In this case, it would be 3 to the power of 1 over 2 to the power of 2 equals 3 to the power of 1. So we get 3 there. And then multiplied by 1, that doesn't change. And we can cross out the 3 and the 1 over 3 because they simplify each other out. I mean, they, they kind of neutralize each other and we get an answer of pi. So that's the volume right there. Very simple problem. 
I hope this was intuitive. But to review, the important thing about this question was um, the rotation, kind of grasping the idea that you can rotate a shape around an axis or a, like, a line on the coordinate plane and then get a um, three-dimensional shape out of this two-dimensional shape on the coordinate plane. And another thing to note was the, um, the side ratios for the 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is the same for every um, 30, 60, 90 triangle because they're all similar, so their side ratios are the same. So good thing to remember if you didn't know it already. Well, thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time.